the amino acid sequence of cytochrome C was determined for five different species of vertebrates. The table below shows the number of differences in the sequences between each pair of species. So just to give us some context for what we're talking about, we're talking about cytochrome C. This is a protein. You might remember it when we studied the electron transport chain. You don't really have to know that for this question. But it's a protein that's found in a lot of different species. And we're going to compare the difference in, in the sequence of amino acids for that protein in the different species. So even though you have a, the same or similar protein, we call them all cytochrome C, the sequence might be slightly different when you go from one species of vertebrate to another. And the way to read this is, in e for each of these rows, you could say, all right, this is, say, this row is, describes D. polylepis, and we could see the number of sequence differences between D. polylepis and G. gallus. There's 18 differences. There's clearly going to be zero differences between that species and itself. All right, now let's answer their question. Using the data in the table, create a phylogenetic tree on the template provided to reflect the evolutionary relationships of the organisms. Provide reasoning for the placement on the tree of the species that is least related to the others. So looking at these differences, it's, it's, it's reasonable to say, well, the things that have the fewest differences in the sequence of cytochrome C, well, those are probably most closely related. And they already gave us a tree here. So whatever goes here and here are probably pretty closely related. They shouldn't have too many differences in the sequence of cyto in, in the sequence of cytochrome C. And these two should be pretty similar, shouldn't have many differences. While this one should have a, a good number of differences from any of the other four. So let's first look at which ones have very little difference. And I'm just looking, I'm just scanning this chart here and looking for small numbers. So you see here. There's only one amino acid difference or one sequence, well, yeah, one amino acid difference between cytochrome C and E. ferris and E. africanus. So I would say that these are fairly closely related. They probably share uh, an ancestor not too far in the distant past. So let me write E. ferris and E. africanus. So I'll do it here. E. E. ferris and E. E. africanus. I do that there. Now, where else do we see some low numbers? Well, I see this three right over here, and so that's that's dealing that's the the number of sequence differences or the amino acid differences between G. gallus and A. forsteri forsteri, however you pronounce that. So I would say those are probably pretty closely related, and so let me write this here: G. gallus. And A. Forsteri. And who have we not dealt with yet? Well, we haven't dealt with we haven't dealt with D. Polylepis yet. We've dealt with the other four, so I'll put that here. D. Polylepis. And you can see when you compare D. Polylepis to any of the other ones, you see a, a pretty big difference. D. Polylepis. To E. ferris, it's a 21 difference, 18 difference with G. gallus, 17 difference with A. forsteri, and a 20, 20 amino, acid, amino acids are different in the sequence for cytochrome C between D. polylepis and E. africanus. So this, is, this has the most differences. And they say, they say, provide reasoning for the placement on the tree of the species that is least related to the others. So I'll provide the reasoning. So, D. polylepis is, is most, is least related, I should say, is least related because it has a large amino acid, amino acid sequence. Difference from the other four, from the other other four, or you can say has the largest. Maybe I'll write that has the largest 
amino acid sequence difference from the other four. Because even if you were to compare E. ferris to G. gallus, E. ferris to G. gallus, you still don't get close to 20, while D. polylepis is pretty close to 20 difference with all of them. And so that makes sense that even these four share a common ancestor that you don't have to go as far back in time to get to the common ancestor as you do to get to D, the common ancestor, common ancestor with D. polylepis. All right, let's do part B now. So that was part A. Let me label that. That was part A. Now part B. Identify whether morphological data or amino acid sequence data are more likely to accurately represent the true evolutionary relationships among the species and provide reasoning for your answer. So morphological data, this is looking at the, the morphology of the different, the different species. And you could say like, okay, what's the shape of their backbone or their different bones or, or the, the, the shape of different parts of their, their body. While amino acid sequence, well, you're looking at, well, what are their pro how are their proteins actually made up? I personally would go with the amino acid data. So I, I believe, I believe, I believe amino acid sequence data are, data is plural, are more likely, are more likely to ac accurately represent the true evolutionary re relationship, are more, ac are more likely to represent the true evolutionary relationship. True evolutionary relationship. And let me provide my reasoning. You could have convergent morphology. You can have convergent morphology. And that all that means is, For example, you could look at a bat's wings and a bird's wings and say, okay, look, they have similar morphology, but they aren't related just because they, they both have wings. Or you could look at a dolphin and a fish and you say, okay, they both have flippers. Uh, maybe they're more closely related if you just look at the body type. But that's convergent. They, they actually came from uh, different ancestors, uh, but then their ancestors, because they had similar environments, had, con had convergent uh, uh, parts, I guess you could say, had convergent morphology. You can have convergent morphology morphology while having very while while being far apart on the evolutionary tree while being far apart on evolutionary evolutionary tree Now there's arguments for morphology as well because you might be looking at, you know, we're only looking at cytochrome C here. Uh, that might be some type of an anomaly or maybe you have some convergence or divergence for, for that particular protein that is, does not actually gel with what's actually, actually happened in evolutionary history. But in general, if I can look at the, the, the molecular sequences, if I can look at sequences of proteins, if I could look at what's going on with the DNA, I, I like looking at that because that, doesn't, that allows you to not be tricked by the convergent morphology uh, of far apart things like bats and birds or dolphins and fish.